Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to show you how I edit a photo in Lightroom. And the reason I wanted to do this is a lot of people have been asking me for color toning, and this is the start of my color toning, because if I don't process it in Lightroom, it's not going to get the right colors, so just showing you the, only the steps in Photoshop wouldn't really give the full effect. So the first thing I want to do is in this develop module here, I want to get my white balance right. Now, this shot has pretty good white balance straight out of camera, but I want to play with it just a little bit more. So I'm going to just grab this temperature slider. I'm just going to kind of rock it all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And it's going to seem a little weird, but we're just going to bounce back and forth here. And what this does is it kind of like resets your eyes. And I'm just going to kind of like move in between and like kind of try to find where I like it for the skin color. And I don't care too much about getting a correct white balance. I just want the skin color to look good. So I think about 7,000 is good. And what I'll usually do is I'll just type in the exact number. So I'll go back to six and I'll just type in 7,000. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the tint. Although right now, once again, it does look pretty spot on at six, but we're gonna do that. And it looks like I ended up at about eight where I like it. And see, I think that's a pretty good color. Now, this shot's a little different than my usual work because this is taken at a meetup, but I figured it would be a good one to show because there's lots of colors and stuff for us to play with here. So the next thing I do is play with my highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks in the exact same way, dragging it left to right until I get the balance that I think looks correct. It was very cloudy that day, so I want to kind of bring that back. So I'm going to bring it down to about 80. And once again, if you want to be really OCD like me, you can just kind of undo that and actually put in the exact number of 80. And we want minus because plus 80 would just make it way too blown out. And we don't want that. That's good there. And then I want to open up the shadows a bit more so we can see more. So about 20. If I bring whites down, it gets a little too flat. So I kind of want to bring my whites up just a little bit and then we're gonna bring the shadows down just a tiny bit so just in doing the white balance and the highlights shadows whites blacks we went from here to here oops actually I missed the blacks so that's the difference we made already now sometimes I'll put a bit of clarity and I know a lot of people don't like to use clarity on uh, people because it tends to make things a little too sharp but I think anywhere from like 10 and lower, it just kind of adds a little pop. So you see how it just kind of like makes the brights and darks pop. It's because clarity, all it really does is adjust mid-tone contrast. So I think I'll do about like a five. So next we're going to go and scroll down to here where it says HSL. And we're going to make sure it's on all. And we're just going to play with the uh, different sliders here a little bit. And usually I'll take red and move that up to about 25. And that just kind of takes out the red skin tones. So it's not as pink. Uh, she doesn't really have much, but typically I'll do that. And then I'll just kind of like play with these. So you can see what yellow does, which or orange, which isn't very good. Uh, I don't really want to change any of that. That looks good just as it is. Usually I typically don't change orange at all. Yellow is kind of the same. If you look, it's really only affecting her shirt. So if we wanted to make her shirt, and uh, it looks like the fence is getting picked up a little bit too. If we want to make that a little more orange, if we wanted to make it more like a green color or whatever, we could. Uh, I like the tone that it is, so I'm probably just going to leave it at zero. And then we're going to go into green here. And there's not really much green in this. So it's not really doing anything. Now for aqua, I had a lot of people ask about the, how I got the blues in the last shot of this, so I'm going to show you what we do is we just kind of take this and drag this over and to the left or to the right, and then I like it a little to the left here, so I'm going to do about minus 50. I like really even numbers, uh, and then we're going to go to blue, and we're going to drag it this way as well because that will give us that kind of like bright aqua color. If we were to drag this way, we could turn it more like a dark blue or like purple, but I like this kind of like teal look almost. I find it clashes well with skin tones and looks good. So we're going to go into saturation here and we really only modified the blues are red, but we don't want to overly saturate red because that's not going to look good anyways. So we're going to go ahead and just grab the aqua here. Just kind of drag it up a little bit and we'll do like plus 20. 
Same with blue, we'll kind of give that like plus 20. And now just in the hue saturations, from going from the clarity step to that, that's a difference that's already made to the color. Now you can also, instead of just saturation, you can make this lighter or darker under luminance. So if we were to grab the blue now, so you can change it if you want it super bright or really dark, depending. That actually looks kind of cool, but I think it's a little too dark. So let's bring it back to about negative 30. So once again, but going back to the clarity step and then to here, that was all done with just hue saturation adjustments. And finally, the last step I will usually do is go to lens corrections here, and then I will enable profile collections. I'm a big fan of a vignette, so I typically don't do it that much. Uh, for some people with, uh, you know, lower end lenses, you might want to do it just because it's not uh, a pretty vignette, or you might want to, you know, correct the chromatic aberrations if it's like really a uh, bad lens for that. But I mean, for the most part, you can usually get away without doing it. I usually don't because I kind of like the way it looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. And finally, if you want to do a bit of toning in Lightroom, if you're not very proficient in Photoshop, you can do split toning here where you pick a color for your highlights, you pick a color for your shadows, and it kind of applies it into the highlights and shadows. So I'm a big fan of using opposite colors. So if I use like an orange, I'm going to be using a teal. If I use a yellow, I'm going to be using a blue. Using a green, I'm going to be using a magenta. And finally, using an aqua, you're going to be using a red. But So we'll just go grab yellow here. And it's kind of a too bright of a yellow, I think. I want it a little more faded. Okay, and of course, this is like way high up. So we're going to go ahead and just grab that yellow real fast. And then for shadows, we're going to grab a blue. I think somewhere about there looks good. Okay, now we're just going to adjust this saturation a lot. We're going to take it from 100 to like 10 on each of these, just because we don't want too much here. Okay, so maybe 10 is not as strong enough, so we'll do like 15. And then another 15. And all that really does is it just kind of gives a basic tone. So we go from here to here just by adding that toning which I mean it, it looks kind of nice but this is not the way I typically do my toning um, I usually do this uh, part in Photoshop which I will show in the next video so that's how I process my files in Lightroom and I hope it was educational for you guys and I hope it helped out and if you enjoyed it and you want other people to be able to learn from me please leave a like comment and subscribe if you're not already and if you use this in your own work and want me to take a look at it, use the hashtag NickSmithTutorials on Instagram and I'll take a look at your work. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.